Hiroshima. Hello, people. I didn't really know what I was going to talk about today, but um, something came to mind as I left home. And that is the fact that over the years I've had to be very careful about the bikes that I've chosen to buy because I'm a shorter rider. It's not my fault, it's my legs. And a lot of very nice bikes have had to uh, <laughs> been given a miss, as it were, because they're simply too tall for me. And having ridden a bike that uh, was too tall for me, in fact, I could just about get my toes on the floor, I'm fully aware of all the problems that that can cause. And uh, it's not riding, riding's fine. It's when you have to stop or you have to maneuver the bike while you're sitting on it. Not being able to get any purchase at all because you can't get your feet flat on the floor is not funny. Uh, I suppose it looks funny. But as you can imagine, that's not a problem that I've ever had in all the years I've been riding Harley Davidsons. Um, even though a Harley is a fat old lump and heavier than most motorcycles it's still much easier for me to manoeuvre around than a lighter, taller, taller bike and sometimes it's not even just the height of the seat it could be the width the width of the seat can affect your foot placement on the floor the only problem I've had with Harleys and I've had it with a couple of them is the riding position. Now you may recall that on my last video I one of the first things I did was adjust my mirrors because I'd moved the bars slightly to make the riding position more comfortable. What actually happened was on my first ride on the soft tail slim I pulled away, put my feet where I thought the footboards should be and they weren't there. <laughs> They had fallen off, I know what you think about Harleys. They're probably down the road, mate. Uh, no, they, they were a little bit further forward than I expected them to be. And likewise, with the bars. Now, I wouldn't have thought anything of it, other than the fact that I've owned a soft tail slim before, and I don't remember having a similar problem with my previous soft tail slim. So the only thing I can put it down to is that perhaps Harley have changed the tuck and roll seat. Now, if I remember, I will try, because I keep saying, I'll put something up, and I never put it up on the screen, but um, the tuck and roll seat is a seat that is comfortable. It's not uncomfortable, but it's just a curve. There's just a curve at the top, and I think the seating position that it naturally finds for me, not, not for everyone, but for me, is just a little bit further back than I would like. Not way back, I'm not stretching right out, but just a little bit further than I ideally would like. And it didn't happen on my previous soft tail slim and I couldn't work out why. It, the seat's chosen because of the retro look of the bike. I mean, it's got some lovely retro touches and what I like is it's it's got those touches, but at the same time, it's got some modern features as well, like uh, that electric fuel injection, ABS, um, LED running lights that are brake lights and indicators and that sort of combination appealed to me. A drawback with buying a soft tail slim is more often than not they come as a solo seater which to some people might be an advantage but as I take a pillion out occasionally I needed it to be able to uh, be a two up bike but to do that you literally have to buy the whole kit and caboodle to change it. You have to buy um, a seat bolt receiver. I don't know what you call it, but the thing you screw the seat bolt into because I wanted to leave the original one there in case I decided to put the solo seat back. Um, you have to buy a rear peg mounting kits. You have to buy the pegs themselves. You have to, of course, buy the two up seat. And you also have to buy uh, well, you don't have to buy, but I would have put a, a sissy bar or a backrest on it anyway, because I like the look of a backrest on a on a Harley. I would have put it on there even if I kept it solo. 
all that adds up but I also thought to myself well I want to change the original seat as well so I may have to buy two seats I may have to buy a two up seat and also a single seat for myself to move me a little bit further forward now the problem with that is that I can't afford to buy two seats they're bloody expensive um, the first and uh, the priority if you like was to get myself sorted out with a with a two up seat so I I got the mounting pegs did those put the pegs on done that I bought the two up seat now when I looked at two up seats most of the ones that were sympathetic to the style of the bike were really cool but the problem was the actual passenger part of the two up seat was naught but a strip of leather now the soft tail slim I had before had the little pad on the back for the pillion and we had to keep stopping because of the <laughs> the uncomfortable ride that the pillion was having so I knew that those sort of seats wouldn't cut it they wouldn't be good enough so I thought well it doesn't really matter for two up if I go and get myself a really comfortable seat even if it's not sympathetic to the style of the bike because when I go out on my own I can take that off and put on whatever seat I chose to buy and I was looking at the Mustang seat so I was looking at a few different seats but um, as I was looking at uh, the seats I, I looked at uh, a Harley seat called I thought they were going to go then that's why there was a hesitation there people um, I looked at a seat called a Sundowner now a Sundowner for me at least is one of the one of the most comfortable seats that Harley do both for the rider and for the pillion it's got a very wide and soft pillion pad and I thought that would be ideal for the two up riding no complaints can come there not from the sundowner and I started to look at solo seats but when the sundowner arrived and I put it on the bike I was quite surprised because yes it changed the look of the bike yes it, it isn't as cool as the tuck and roll seat and maybe not as cool as uh, some other solo seats that you can buy like the Mustang and other things but to be honest it didn't look that bad it really didn't look as bad as I thought it was going to look and I thought well I'd give it a go just to see how it is for me the rider because it was bought purely because of the pillion and today is my first ride out on it <laughs> it's really nice oh no it's really good um, because it's got a ridge behind your posterior where the tuck and roll seat is just a, a, a sort of curve you've kind of got a little bit of a not a back rest but a bum rest I suppose you call it you've got a little ass rest behind behind you so you don't slide back on it so that's one positive thing it's definitely moved me forward I know that for a fact because everything feels a lot closer and a lot better and a lot more comfortable than it did with the tuck and roll seat but the thing more than anything is the fact that it's so damn comfortable it is lovely to, to ride and it crossed my mind that all right it's not in keeping with the badass look of the bike but who's going to see when I'm riding along what's more important posing or being comfortable um, I'll probably do a walk around once I've got my uh, sissy bar sorted out so you can see the overall look of the bike and what I've done to it some people go what have you done you've sport it completely but uh, I've decided to keep the sun down the seat on the bike and Trust me, it is really, really nice. That was all. If you're a biker, you ride safe. If you're not a biker, you be safe. I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching, guys.